So here we have what appears to be an A1706 MacBook. It says with a post-it, this is Emily's MacBook that hates her. Emily, did the MacBook spill liquid on you or did you spill liquid on the MacBook? Because I would argue that this needs to be reversed. It sounds like you hate the MacBook. But I digress. We're going to get to this, see if we can figure out who hates who more, make this thing work again. They're not lying. It's commercial real estate. See. Right, but you're not going to find anything. They're not lying. It's commercial real estate. And just know it's not me. It's the way it's listed. That's <laughs> yeah. how I get but it. But did you so post the ad or did they post the ad? No, I, you see, they told me. Right, but you're not going to find anything. See. Right, but you're not going to find anything. All right, looks like we have a red sticker on a CD3215 over here. So I'm going to do with this what I do with every MacBook that I work on. We are going to unplug the battery and then see how many amps it takes. It turns on. So it looks like their issue is question mark folder. Question mark folder is usually a corroded probe point on the side of the board. Or a corroded resistor right by the NAND stuff. So let's see what we have over here. So what's going on over here? Corroded capacitor for PP1V8 SSD hot. That's PP3V3S5 SSD. Over the, no, that's not. Yeah, PP3V3S5 SSD corroded. Resistor for PPVIN 2V7 NAND corroded. So the issue that she said is here is that this is not seeing the drive. Question mark folder. And remember, this is the model where the hard drive, or the solid state drive, I should say. Sorry for the error is soldered directly onto the board, which causes obvious issues when you have liquid damage on the board. And the board is stops working. So let's see, what is this resistor supposed to be here? That resistor is R9350 that's corroded. And according to the schematic, that resistor should, oh, come on, what are you? Yeah, it should be 1.3 million ohms. Interesting. Is that just the button? Okay, the multimeter's working. But it doesn't want to measure this. It's saying that this is not 1 million ohms. It's saying open line. Let's see if we change range on the meter because I think it's in auto ranging right now. Still nothing. And look, it literally just came right off the board as I was measuring it. Just like that. That just poof. Now, one of the important things to understand when working on these machines is where the liquid tends to move on each machine and what that circuit is for. Because you're going to have that again and again. Whatever the water tends to funnel its way through on that specific machine based on the internal layout of the components, Get to know that area really well, because that's going to be the area where you get most of your liquid damage. And on this machine, a part of it appears to be the SSD circuit. Which is great, because this is a machine that has the SSD soldered onto the board. And it's one of those really interesting things that I find funny when people say stuff like, you know, this stuff is all becoming far... You used to be able to replace parts, now you can't, so there's no place for repair people. This is one of the areas where I really just sit, sit back and laugh. Obviously, I'm laughing as I'm clearly every single day in my life telling you not to buy an Apple product. So I laugh guilt-free, of course. But where I'm laughing when people say that there's no place for repair because the more miserable these devices become to work on and the more integrated they become, the more necessary it is that you be a repair person versus... You know, like in the days where you could just swap out parts, well, yeah, then anybody can swap out parts, which means why the hell would they pay you? 
but in a world where the drive is soldered onto the motherboard, you know, again, I make money every single day off of this kind of stuff. And every single day, I point it out and say, hey, you know, there are other companies that managed to make products that were liquid resistant 15 years ago. I would suggest you check them out. They're cheaper. They treat you better. But again, you don't listen to me. Why listen to me? There's no point. Right? I'm all about the money, right? That, that's all I'm about. According to many people who yeah, dislike my criticisms, my recommendations. I'm all about the money. That's why every single day I show up here as a person who works exclusively mostly on um, Apple products outside of data recovery and tell you not to buy them. That's what a greedy piece of crap I am. This guy is such a greedy schmuck that every day he puts in work and effort to try and dismantle his business model. It's all greed. Okay, so let's turn this thing around and look at the other side of the board in that very spot. And let's also take a look at what the piccolo area looks like. That looks fine. A little bit of dust, but that's not really corrosion. We gonna kill your ass. I'm ready. As I grab the clock, put it to your head piece. Okay, it boots into my OS. Let's see if it works in there, OS. So in my OS, it's boots. Let's see if they can. S if we can see their OS from my OS. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Users, Emily. All right, so this does work. It sees her drive, and it has her name on it. Her operating system is likely corrupt from when the liquid spill occurred, which is why it's not booting. But that does not mean... So this woman likely needs a reinstall with data. Now, obviously, the backing up of data is not something that I'm going to put on the screen because, you know, data privacy and all that, all that good jazz. But this is fixed to the point so that I could show you on camera. The rest of it will happen off camera and that's how you deal with that. I'm gonna hit Alt with the red nerf gun and F4 with the blue nerf Stop gun. It. Stop it. So as you can see over here this has booted up into the operating system. It says Emily. I'm covering the last name for privacy purposes but this is indeed now fixed. It's seeing an SSD so it looks like they had an issue with one resistor up here, R9350. Let's take a look at that on the schematic and board view and see what that's for. So R9350. Let's blow up the schematic view on the screen. U9330 is going to be a chip that is responsible for creating power rails for the SSD. And it's called Piccolo. Piccolo is available on store.rossmangroup.com. And it looks like there is a pin called IUVD, but IUVD, I honestly don't know what that means. And I probably can't find a data sheet to the chip to figure out what the importance of IUVD is. But it was corroded, and now it's not, so it works. That's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something. If you can find a data sheet to Piccolo, if you can find a data sheet to Piccolo, I will be so happy that I will give you this man's Mercedes. Immediately. But... Actually, I don't think I can do that because it's a lease. And it's kind of an old shitty one as well. But <sighs> So, uh, anyway, we're going to end this. It's about time for a Nerf War. I've had enough for today. See you all later. Uh, if you are one of the patron people, there will be a 10 p.m. live stream. If you're not one of the patron people, then later on there will be a normal live stream. But I'm going to do my best to do a daily live stream for the Patreon people. Today the topic is going to be some curveballs that I got and the real estate thing that I wasn't expecting. That kind of, some of them, some of it like made me feel a little better, but only after it's absolutely sucked. Also, the good thing about having the camera there is even when I'm not looking at the window, I can see Steve sneaking in and we can kill him. <laughs>